Hello again, YouTubers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm your host, the Board Game Captain. I'm Lynn. I'm Alex. And today we're going to be counting down our top 10 games that replace classics. Now for this list, we put together 10 games that we feel replace classic games. And this is kind of like for two purposes. It's both for us saying what are our favorite games that give us the same feel as some classic games we used to enjoy more. It also, though, is a, a good set of games to recommend to people that are new to hobby gaming, that maybe only play classics, and you could say, well, if you like this game, then you'll love this game. So why don't we talk a little bit first about how we put our list together. What did you do for putting your list together? I, um, well, I thought about the games that I played as a kid. Hmm. I didn't play a lot of games, <laughs> so then I had to put on some games that that you were introduced to later. That, yeah, that I never really played, but they do a newer game that I do like replaces them. Mm. So I don't even miss that I never played them. And I, what? Okay, no, I get it. I, I put them in the order of how well they replace the classic. Oh, so like by the mechanics, how well they replace yes. the mechanics of the old game. How, well, what did you do, Alex? A uh, little bit of uh, what Lynn did. I. Took some of the classic games that I've played that I probably still own, and uh, the the games that replace those the best. Um, I ranked mine and how I like the game, the modern game. Hmm. So it's not necessarily how better, how well it replaces the classic game. I did it in how enjoyable, how enjoyable it is. It is hmm. The preference of play. I'm actually somewhere between the two of you, which is weird because I'm sitting between the two of you. But uh, I went basically <clears throat> I went and looked on my on my board game geek li uh, list of games. And I looked at my favorite games first, and I pulled off 20 games that I loved and also that replaced classic games. Mm -hmm. And then I narrowed it down to 10 by first yanking out ones that might have been a bit of a stretch about how they replaced the classic game, mm -hmm. then yanking out any doubles, anything that replaced the same game as another game. I yank out the one I liked a little bit less, and then narrowed it down to 10, and then I put the 10 in an order that is a bit of a mix between one, how much I like the game, and two, how well it replaces the classic game. So I actually right. took both into consideration. Well, I think if, if I had something that replaced a game extraordinarily well, mm. but I also liked, but I liked another game better, it, it, it definitely influenced it. It wasn't a strong. Would you have gone with the one you liked better or the one that replaced it better? Uh, if I if it replaced the game better more than I liked it, it would have gotten, it got a higher ranking. Oh, okay. So, so you did, you did like a mix in between. Yeah, All right. for sure. So, uh, without any further ado, let's get to our number 10 on the list. Number 10. Now we've already done the dealing of the random cards and we found that the order will be for this countdown, Alex, me, and then Len. So Alex, what have you got for your number 10? Number 10 is Nitwit. I believe this is, is this your game, Lynn? Yes, I bought it. Yeah, Lynn bought this. So this replaces uh, Scattergories as the classic game. It is uh, very similar in that you are using the words that are suggested in order to come up with a clever or funny uh, word or phrase that, that describes it. But the game mechanics make you have to go way outside the box in your mm. thinking because you can have a recommended category that is it has nothing to do with anything you can possibly <laughs> think of. It, it's a color, a shape, and you know, something. It could be like could be yellow, round, whimsical. And, and whimsical. Right. Yeah. And so, you, so that that's where you, the uh, creativity comes in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the mechanics are fun. It's it's you, you're a lot of interaction on the table. There's a lot of things you have to move around, and you have a little more control over what everyone's going to end up playing with than just uh, in category. So, and it's all. Actually, pretty fun for a group of people to play. This is a solid, fun game, and I do believe it replaces categories well. I don't disagree with you. I didn't quite make my list, but it definitely is a good one. I like categories more than Nitwit. Oh, do you? Yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> even though even though this one is yours, but you do like yeah. Nitwit. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll play it, but if I had to choose between that and categories, I would play categories. That's fair. See, this made my list because of how well it replaces categories, I thought. Yeah, yeah it, it, I'm... Not going to give you any crap for it. Pass me the uh, my, my number 10, please. My number 10 is Thunder and Lightning, a little game by Richard Borg. Now, 
Thunder and Lightning for me replaces the classic game Stratego. Now, again, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean I'm never going to play Stratego again. Actually, that is uh, a, a game that I think holds up pretty well for a classic game. But Thunder and Lightning overall does some sim very similar mechanics in an even more fun way. And I quite enjoy this game. I think Thunder and Lightning is great. And I think it actually um, it improves on the basic bluffing mechanic of moving pieces up and not knowing what they are until you attack them that you have in Stratego and does it in a new and interesting way. So I do really like it. Yeah, I, yeah, I like it. Oh, all right. What do you got for your number 10? My number 10 is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. It replaces Solitaire. And because the captain will play it with yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, <laughs> lonely, lonely game. He, he hates this game. Uh, I'm not a fan. Um, so I do, I, I play it by myself. And I do have fun with it. But I still also do play solitaire. Now, I have so. to ask. Because my only surprise about this is that it's not higher on your list. Well, that's because how I how I ordered my list. I ordered mm. my list in how well they were placed. Oh, okay. Game. So because I, I still play solitaire, and then it didn't fully replace it. Plus, also, it's very different mechanics. Even yeah. though it's a solitaire game, yeah. it doesn't play like solitaire. It's not yes. a card game. Right. Okay, that's fair enough. All okay. right, let's get on to our number nine. Number nine. All right, number nine for me is Zombie Dice. Hmm. Zombie Dice is um, is Yahtzee. <laughs> yeah, it's better Yahtzee. It's better than Yahtzee, but it's Yahtzee, and it's uh, there's a little more um, involvement in flavor. One, in, Maybe flavor. There's more flavor. 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 Yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's not even that it's more complicated. No, fact, no. I mean, it's, it's less it's, complicated, but there's more decisions. But it's also it's also quicker. Yes. And that, that's the thing is Yahtzee is too long for what it is. Right. This is a quicker game. You're right. you're in and you're out. Right. Right. You can do this in five minutes with yeah. two people, five minute game. Yeah. You know, Very fast. And you could gamble on it. <laughs> Zombie dice. dice. And it's great over a beer. It is great over a beer. Absolutely. Because yeah. it doesn't take too much concentration. My number nine is Grim Slingers. Now for me, Grim Slingers is a replacement to a game I haven't played in probably over, oh God, tw uh, probably 25 years. And so this seems weird, but it, okay. The game I'm choosing for this to be a replacement of is War. When I was a little kid, my brother and I used to play War a lot. And it's that one-on-one -on -one heads up battling um, feeling to War felt really cool until you got old enough to realize that there was literally zero strategy in War. It was totally random. Um, all you, I mean, all, all you were doing was flipping up a card and seeing who won. But in this, you, t you, you take that one-on-one -on -one heads up style when you're doing the duels in Grim Slingers, mm -hmm. and you're adding a strategy to it. You're trying to read your opponent. What is he going to try to do? Can I pick the card that's going to, going to counter him? And it takes the one-on-one -on -one heads up style, brings it in and makes it a strategy game, makes it a game where you have to read your opponent. And I think that's a uh, freaking head and shoulders above it. And the only reason it's as low on my list is it is a bit of a stretch because it doesn't actually have any mechanics of war. But it, so it is a bit of a stretch in how it replaces war, but it does give the same feeling to me. That one-on-one -on -one heads up fighting feeling. And it is a very simple game, even though it adds strategy into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you got for your number? My number nine is Pingo Pingo. All right. <laughs> okay, now hold on, hold on. Okay. I want to I want to guess what it replaces. What does it replace? I have hold, hold on, hold on. Is it um uh nightmare? Yes. Yes. <laughs> nightmare from it was a board game that was released in 1991, and it came with a video cassette. Oh, I remember this. And game. it was timed. I mean, the, obviously the video cassette never changed. Um, and you had to collect keys. Every once in a while, a dude called the gatekeeper would pop up on the television and yell at you. And he would call you a maggot. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> he, would go, he would listen here, maggot. <laughs> yeah, and he would interrupt the game, and you, and basically, with all his interruptions, and he would do things like the person who's the youngest player loses a turn or something like that. And, um, and you basically, you had to try and win the game before the videotape was up. And Pingo Pingo, while it's it's more of a kids game, Nightmare was more more adult game, but it's the same thing. It has a CD 
They and use sounds to they use the sounds instead of a video, but the sounds mm -hmm. ha you you run you set up the little targets. There's like a little dart gun, and you have to like shoot targets, and then a sound <laughs> happens, and you have to go and like you know flip over cards and hope that there's not things. snakes on them. You know what? <laughs> this, this is a great replacement tonight. <laughs> And you're right. This is a hundred. It's just it's uh, interactive. It's very. It's it's yeah. well. It's got the you know the the automatic time thing. Mm -hmm. The the one and this is a way better game than Nightmare was. Nightmare is kind of a cheesy game. My one thing is that I would I, granted Nightmare is a, is over twenty years old and it's a classic now. When I was thinking classics, I was trying to actually think back much older games. But you're right. Nightmare is a classic game, and this is actually a much better game for Nightmare. And anyone who is nostalgic about that style of game. I think you're right. Would and enjoy those, thing those people who are nostalgic for Nightmare quite possibly have kids, and this would be the perfect thing to play with them. That's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything to add? No. Let's, let's <laughs> add on to our number eight. Number eight. Well, my number eight replacement for a classic game is The Blood of an Englishman, which is... There it is. Uh, is a Jack and the Beanstalk kind of game. You have uh, to, the cards are in a random order, but you have to beat the the opponent who's either Jack or the giant. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you set up your cards, you have to move them around and play them in, in a particular order. And uh, you're fighting against each other and you can kind of sabotage one another and depending on how you play your cards. I use this game to replace a really uh, old French card game called Mealbore. That was, I think it was developed in the 40s or 50s, and it was a uh, card game where you had to get to the end of the race, which was, I think it was a 1,200 kilometer race, mm. and your opponent could throw stop signs or flat tires or whatever in your way, and it was like a sabotage your opponent mm. kind of card game, and it was actually played very similar. You know, I've never played this game, Mealborn, that you're talking about. I love Blood of an Englishman, and I could definitely see, though, that whole sabotaging thing, how that would, would be a good replacement to it. But yeah. I've never, I, you told me about Mealborn, and believe it or not, I've never even heard of it. Me neither. Yeah. 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 So I, that was one. <laughs> one. One. Game. <laughs> one game that you know that I didn't? You didn't know. <laughs> that's, Ever. <laughs> that's fair. My number eight is Mouse Guard, Swords, and Strongholds. Now, I've picked this to be a replacement to chess. There are so many games I could have picked as a replacement to chess, modern abstract strategy games that are wonderful. But of all of the current modern abstract strategy games that I play, this is probably my favorite. I absolutely love it. I love the addition of the hand of cards in it. It adds a little bit of unpredictability, a little bit of, of mystery. You don't know what's in your opponent's hand. And I like that added to the abstract strategy game. It's not complete information anymore, and I think that's right. a great addition. And it plays faster than a game of chess, for sure. Yes. And this I, this isn't on my list, but it should be. I just didn't do it because it was too predictable. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's one that, that just missed the list? No, it should be, like, top three, but, I, yeah, I didn't want to be predictable. <laughs> it's on every list I make, so I just didn't do it. <laughs> All right, fair enough. My number eight is Phantom Society. Mm. And it... For me, it replaces memory. Oh. Um, it's not quite the same. That's why it's so it's still high on the list because um, one person knows where the ghosts are, and the other person, the ghost hunter, has mm. to find them. So it's like memory for the ghost hunters, mm. but not for the ghosts. It still is. It still is though. Yeah. It's. It has. It has. Um, that's why I mean that's why it replaces memory because yeah. it's similar, it's but like memory it, with taunting because you can because yeah. <laughs> you know what it is. Okay, well, let me just state I never liked memory and I don't like this game. <laughs> he hates this game. <laughs> it's such good memory. He, yeah. he hates it with the passion of a thousand white hot suns. <laughs> it's it's possible. You can just change you just change the title on this video to. Games that the captain hates that Lynn No, loves. that was all no. I like Pingo Pingo. It's goofy fun. <laughs> Let's get on to our seven. Number seven. Number seven for replacement of a classic game for me is Mysterium, mm. which obviously and probably universally replaces Clue. Uh, this I like this game a lot. I in this game fully 
replaces Clue. Yeah. There's if you have Clue and this game in your house at the same time, you Why? are being redundant. You don't Why? you don't need one or the other. So and you don't need Clue. You need this game. Yeah. Um, I this this would be higher on my list other than I know it's higher on the other two's list. So <laughs> <laughs> again for just to make it a little more interesting and spread it out, I put this at seven. We could have just passed it between all three. I don't <laughs> I, yeah, I don't wanna I don't wanna give away that it's on our list, but I yeah, it's probably on all of them. It seems like such a no-brainer. Yeah, right. This so this is a very good game that also replaces the classic game extraordinarily well. So yes, I mean this. It really does. It it, it could be again top three. If, if if this was a three top three list, this would be on that. Even well. though it didn't make your top three, it's not my top three. So I'm not sure how your criteria works. But okay. <laughs> how about, well, I'm also trying not to be so predictable because I have to keep doing right. the same game over and over. Again. All right. Uh, for mine, now this is not a crossover, but the game it replaces has already been mentioned. And this is Fantasy, which was put out by AEG. And for me, this is a replacement to Yahtzee. So Alex already mentioned uh, Zombie, Zombie Dice, Dice yeah. to replace Yahtzee. And Zombie Dice replaced it as being a quicker, lighter game. Mm -hmm. But now this is the opposite. This takes the Yahtzee mechanic and gives you more you can do with it. You use it to activate your heroes to attack monsters and to kill them. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. I mean, it, it takes Yahtzee and has a reason to be rolling the dice rather than just getting points. I mean, you're making a group of heroes. The group of the heroes have the dice you need to roll on them. You press your luck for rolling the dice, and every time you put the dice on them, you activate them, and they get to attack the monsters, which give you then give you the points. Yeah, it's, it's a more roundabout way of getting the points, but it's a much more fun way of getting the points. I would play this game after playing this game, after playing this game for hours, because it's just tons of fun. And in fact, we have played this game multiple times in a row. Yeah, it's even got the play on the Yahtzee name in it. Yeah. It does, mm -hmm. which is which is kind of kind of funny. They did. They 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 100% wanted to make sure you realized that this was kind of like a modern fantasy update to Yahtzee, and it does the it just does the job well. Today. My number seven is Seventh Hero, which replaces Rummy Five Hundred. Oh, for the set collector. Yeah. Oh, okay. I can you see like that. You were looking very quizzical. Well, I, didn't, I didn't know what you had it. Well, because I, I mean, I, this is the game doesn't play like one. No, but you all. collect sets and okay. then you win. Like, I, it's a bit of a stretch, but it is a great game, and you do collect sets, so yeah. I could see that. I could see that. It, it does seem like a bit of a stretch because you're, you're not, you don't even have a hand of cards in this. You pick up a card and then. You, well, you do have a hand. Oh, of yeah, cards. you do have a hand of cards, but then you pass mm -hmm. the cards to other yeah. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 But a, a little bit of a stretch, I think, but uh, not too bad. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna totally rag on you for it. It's not like one that Alex did in the previous video, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm still bringing up. Um, all right, let's get on to our number six. Number six. My number six replacement game is Thunder and Lightning. And that's our first crossover. That is our first crossover. That replaces, like uh, Captain said, Stratego, and for all the reasons he already mentioned. So I just put it a little bit higher. That's a good game. It's a really good game. And it's a really good replacement to Stratego, too. More fun. Mm, indeed, indeed. Now, my next one is Sheriff of Nottingham. Now, for me, Sheriff of Nottingham replaces, and this is just for me because I know there are millions of people who still play the original game, but for me, Sheriff of Nottingham replaces poker. And let me explain. Now, with poker, my favorite part of poker was always the bluffing. I mean, for me, uh, gambling is a side effect. Not a big fan of gambling. I'll gamble sometimes. Gambling doesn't always make a game more interesting for me. The game has to have interesting mechanics. And for me, the most interesting mechanic in poker was always the bluffing element of mm -hmm. trying to fool your opponent and keep them from reading you. And that is in Sheriff of Nottingham in spades. This is all about the bluffing. And in that regard, I think this is a much better bluffing game than poker is. I absolutely adore the bluffing in this. I know you don't like bluffing. Mm. You're not a fan. But... You like bluffing. You played this game. Mm -hmm. There was uh, that would be a replacement to uh, well, we used to play bull. Oh, uh, yeah, and that was, another bluffing game. Another yeah. bluffing game. Well, yeah, that, that was that was bluffing without the gambling. So that was that yeah. would be. I think that would be a more more a okay. More that's fair. Replacement. That's fair. That's fair. My number six is junk art, which replaces Jungle. loudly. Very oddly. Yes. Lots of wooden pieces. Yes. <laughs> Something going on in there. So now, um, I've already mentioned 
on a different video that I thought Junk Art was a bigger mm-hmm. placement to Jenga. Mm-hmm. You picked Jenga on a previous video mm-hmm. in a list, and right. we all talked about that the reason we don't have a copy is because we have Junk Art. Right. And 100%, I think Junk Art does replace. In fact, if you have Junk Art, I don't think you need to have a copy of Jenga. It's true. You don't. No. It, yeah, it's that good. Yeah, it's better. Oh, yeah. It really is. It's, it's, a, better, it's a better dexterity balancing game, 100%. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Good choice. Good choice. I concur. Number five. Uh, number five for me is Behind the Throne. Mm. And like uh, Lynn said, the, her game replaced Rummy 500. Mm-hmm. This replaces Rummy 500 for me. I think that's less of a stretch, actually, than, than Lynn using Seventh Hero. I feel like Seventh Hero seems like a stretch for replacing Rummy 500. Behind the Throne feels a lot like Rummy 500. I, like a yeah. really lot. Like you, you're pulling sets, you're putting them down in front of you. Right. I think you're right. That's why I picked it. I'm going for the most points. No, hundred. No, I'm, I'm backing you up. I'm yeah. saying that's a really good choice. I know yeah. you like this game. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually surprised you didn't pick this for Rummy 500 instead of Seventh Hero. Were you just trying to be unpredictable? No, I think I just didn't think of it. Oh. Okay. Yeah, but no, that is a really good, really good one. Now this, this, this might be funny. Um, let's find out. But I chose for my number five, Ethnos, because it replaces Rummy 500. <laughs> I, think we, I think we all like to play Rummy 500 at some point. Uh, yeah, I, I think we've all had some experience. I could have also said Rummy Cub, which was another classic set collection mm-hmm. game. But, I mean, the thing about Ethnos is now while behind the throne, it adds extra abilities when you have the sets. Mm-hmm. So with this one, it, uh, you you have abilities and you have something to do with the sets rather than just have them be points. Just drop them. Because okay. you make the points, mm-hmm. you do the ability, but then you also get to place control markers on areas on the on a board that help you if you have the most control markers there, they're worth more points later. So there's 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 a couple of extra levels. And it turns it basically it takes the, the mechanics in Rummy 500, adds it to an area control game, and, and makes it like a mid-weight game. Like that's that's still a fairly light game, that's still like an entry-level game behind the throne. Yeah, this is yeah. kind of like a midway, midway game. So you start with Rummy, you go to Behind the Throne, mm-hmm. and then you graduate to Ethnos. Indeed. My number Five. Five is Onitama, which replaces checkers for me. Yeah. You know, I, I just have to throw out there, you have predicted that this would be on just about every list we've done, and I think it has so far. I'm pretty sure it has. I, mean, I, I, I think Onitama is a... I don't want to pick it anymore because, <laughs> because we keep picking it. But someone in the group picks Onitama for every list, but this is a great game. It's such a good... We just got the expansion of this. Ooh, we have to try that. Yeah, out. yeah. Well, so how does it replace checkers for you? Well, um... You're trying to get to the other side, Mm -hmm. and I mean, it's not really, I mean, you don't get kinged and then can move anywhere, but if you get to the little, that's one way to win. You basically win. Yeah, there's two ways to win. Or the other way is just to take out all the other pieces, which is basically how you win in chess. Or take out the master, which would be like how you win win in chess. But no, I don't don't disagree, actually, and I don't think this is a stretch at all to say it replaces checkers. You have some basic moves, you're trying to move across the board, you're trying to outmaneuver your opponent. Definitely think this is a good mm-hmm. one for replacing checkers. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And Oni Tom is a phenomenal game. I've said it before. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Number four. Number four for replacing a classic game is Junk Art. And this is another crossover. Another crossover. So Lynn had this uh, mm-hmm. earlier, and I have it for the same reason. It does replace Jenga. I mentioned Jenga on the previous video, um, and. I was convinced that this is the this is to replace it. If you if you if you have Django and you like it, buy this. You will like it more. Okay, we're more than halfway done with the list. I'm not. I don't feel bad giving away. Junk Art's not on my list, but it was in my top twenty. Well, I know because I made a top twenty. Right. <laughs> so, right. but, you always do. Yeah, yeah. but it, it 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 is one. It it would have been on my list if we had if we had a top twenty instead of a top ten. It's a really good, and, really good replacement. And you, and you could Django's, You could play Django with like with teams, mm. but this you could play truly. Multiplayer and the and the diff- I love how the different cities actually change the rules. Right, and you right. get a, a group of three cities every time you play. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah it's just better. It's head and shoulders above Jenga, hundred percent. My number four is masterpiece mystery motive for murder. Now, for me, masterpiece mystery motive for murder is a replacement to dominoes, and definitely a good game. Huh. 
to show with people that, that like to play dominoes, I had a really hard time with this one. I, I had two games on my top 20 that replaced dominoes, and they were Masterpiece Mystery, Motive for Murder, and there was Lanterns. And I love both games, mm -hmm. and it, it, I struggled with which one I liked better. But I think Masterpiece Mystery beats Lanterns out like, by a hair. Really? Because it's it, it's the way the motives work and having to do them inversely, so that there's a, so that the person actually has a realistic motive for having killed the murder victim. I just love that. I think well, it's brilliant. I think it's also because they also have like little stories on there and yes. what the motives are. So you can when you're placing a piece, you can make up a little story. Like Percy killed you know Lord Byron because he was mean to Percy's lover who is Lord Byron's maid you know <laughs> and by the way Percy and Lord Byron are actually people that yeah. are in here that can be the suspects that's true and yeah and I agree with you that making up the story is absolutely hilarious I mean, it's it's not, yeah it's not in the rules to make up the stories but no it is that's why the descriptions are on that's why the okay. descriptions are on it yeah. I've played Lanterns and I have not played that and that must be very good to beat Lanterns as a replacement yeah Lanterns is a great game and yeah, yeah. you would you would like Masterpiece right. Mystery Maybe we'll play it later. Right, My cool. number four is Lords of Vegas, which replaces Monopoly because Monopoly is terrible <laughs> and Lords of Vegas isn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, hold the call together, too. This is very true. <laughs> we are thoroughly agreeing with Lynn on this one. She speaks the truth. She, she does. To her. This, yeah, wow. And it, it gives you the same feel, like the good parts of Monopoly, and there are a few. But the good parts of Monopoly are in Lords of Vegas. The bad parts of Monopoly are not in Lords of Vegas. Right. So it's everything that was right with Monopoly without everything that was wrong with Monopoly, which is unfortunately too many things. Mm -hmm. Right. You'll, you'll still talk to your friends and right. family after playing after you play this. Yes. Yes. And a little shout out to Sabrina that actually won the last time we played Lords of Vegas. <laughs> she didn't just win, she murdered us. She, she did. She absolutely <laughs> annihilated all three of us. Right. We we were it was it was wait, second, third, fourth? Yeah. I, I think that was yeah, what and all three of us together would not have caught up to her. No, she annihilated us last time. Yeah. But no, this is a phenomenal game, and it definitely replaces Monopoly. No argument for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Number three. All right, top three. So number three for me is Tech. Tech is a strategy game that for me is replacing Nine Men's Morris, which is mm. about as classic as you can get. Pretty old game, yeah. 3,500 3, years old. And uh, it's based on a novel uh, by Patrick Rothfuss, who uh, the wise man's fear. The wise man's fear, who describes the game in the novel, and then uh, the game designer got together with him, and they put the game into reality. And uh, it plays, you know, you could probably use this to replace chess too, but I think it's a little bit less than that. It's got a different mechanics than chess. It's more of a building towards something. Rather well, it's because you're it. connecting the two sides of the right. board, which feels right. like getting you're a three in a row. Right. You're, you're not balance. fighting, you're you know, trying to prevent more mm. than anything. So, But yeah, this replaces uh, Nine Men's Morris for me. I only think it doesn't replace Nine Men's Morris because I still play my Nine Men's Morris a lot and really like it. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like Tack, and Tack probably would have made it on my top 20 if we'd have done a top 20 list, but for me, I think I would have said it replaced Go. Go. Cool. Yeah, because I play. I, I still play, play Nine Men's Morris a lot. I never played Go that much. So. Oh, that's fair. That's so, fair. Well, let's say it updates it, not replaces. And that. we've yeah. actually had a lot of crossovers on this list, more than we've had in the past. And here's another one, that Mysterium. Have. Now we have predicted that this is going to go and be a three-way crossover. For everything that Alex already said about why he loved Mysterium and why it replaces Clue, it's here on my list because this game thoroughly replaces Clue, and I don't even think I need to say anything more about it. You handled it really well earlier. Thank you. My three is Flipping Flag. Okay, what the flip does Flipping Flags replace? <laughs> it replaces <laughs> Slapjack. I don't even know what that is. What is Slapjack? <laughs> it may have been a game that I just made up when I was a kid. <laughs> is this like your version of Calvin Ball? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> My brain hurts. <laughs> Classic in your own way. <laughs> I don't know. I oh, go on. I'm okay. listening. Yeah. Slapjack, you get a regular deck of standard cards. Okay. And um, you put the the deck in between everybody, and each person takes a turn flipping over a card. Mm -hmm. If the card that is flipped over is a jack, the first person to slap it gets that card oh, and the card under it. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, it's it's a speed-based game. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. And this is this has country flags. 
And you don't, I, I don't, you don't have to slap them. You have to yell out the name of the country mm. when you see two flags that match. Two flags that same country. And yeah. you know there is Australia and New Zealand flags in here, and, and that's, that's tough. That one, I think it's like one star difference. Oh my god, yeah. that's so. <laughs> <laughs> they get us so similar. Doesn't New Zealand have a new flag now, though? Like they have a little kiwi so. or something. Well, this was this was before they changed yeah. the, the flag. Cause this is this game's a few years old. Yeah. And that that is that is a a a very very close pair yes. of flags having them both in the game. But yeah, it, you know that, that's a great game for kids to teach them the different national mm-hmm. flags. I never played Slapjack, but now that you were describing it, it is it, it is a game I've seen. Okay. Play. Mm-hmm. It's similar <laughs> like to speed. Like for a second, I was yeah. like, did I make that up? <laughs> no, it's a game. It's a game. I just um I never played it when I was okay. Playing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, called it that. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, there was another game that I played was called Speed that was yeah. very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Number two. Number two replacement game is Shot and Totten. Mm. For me, this replaces poker. It's uh. It's hmm. essentially poker, three card poker. Um, I guess it could also replace war. Yeah, in a method, in a manner, poker this, and war. This together. was one that was on my list, and I knocked it off because I had it replacing war. Actually, and ah, I, okay. I decided to take um, Grim Slingers instead. But yeah, I love shot and top. Because you got three three card poker. Mm-hmm. You're going head to head, and you're fighting over your little stones. The rune stones. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you like this game too, don't yeah. you? But did, 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 did you consider this one for your list? Or? No, I didn't. I no. couldn't think of a game it replaced, really. Well, poker makes sense because of the poker hands, though. Yeah. I, I, I see that, for sure. Uh, now, my number two hasn't been mentioned on anyone else's list before. Uh, but it is, for me, a big one. And it is a big one. And it is Twilight Imperium, 3rd edition. And for me, Twilight Imperium, 3rd edition, replaces Risk. Now, I'm talking about classic Risk. There are a lot of updated, mo- more modern versions of Risk, but I didn't want to re- replace Risk with Risk. With risk. Right. And besides which, this, of all of those big kind of area control, and in this case, uh, 4X type games, which Risk is a bit of a precursor to, this is my favorite. This is the only game I've ever played where I can play one game for eight hours and then be like, wow, where did the day go? Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's one board game for, for eight hours and it didn't feel like eight hours. I'm like, wow, didn't we just start playing this? Why am I so hungry? You know, and, or in the middle, you might take where a break. Where did the sun go? Yeah, where did the sun go? Let me, or let's go order a pizza. But yeah, this is, you, you're you conquering the universe through military, diplomacy, uh, economics, what have you, and trying to be the person that wants it with the, the, the most territory and the most points at the end of the game. And for me, this is a great replacement to risk. <clears throat> My number two is the Duke, the Duke, which replaces chess for me. Mm. Um, okay. Since I never really was a fan of chess, I mean, it's not that much to replace it, but... But you like the Duke. Yes, I, I really like the Duke. It's one of my favorite games, and I think I like it because, I mean, all the pieces are different, and I like that they have what their moves are on there. You know, this thoroughly explains why it was that Onitama replaced checkers and not chess for you. (laughs) There you go. Well, this is more, I I find the Duke more thinky than Onitama. Oh, I agree. I agree. It's definitely more, it's definitely more uh, strategic. Yeah. There's the the moves are more complicated and and, and keeping track of both sides. But this is a great game. It is is the chess to Onitama's checkers. Well, this, this was, when I said that there were so many games, that could have replaced chess for me, oh, but yeah. I chose, but I chose mouse guard. Mm-hmm. Both this and only time were other possibilities that could have replaced chess for me, but I, mm-hmm. I like mouse guard a little more. That was it. Cool. Good pick. And now, finally, number one. My number one replacement for a classic game is surprise. Surprise, surprise. Lords of Vegas, yay! Uh, it's better than Monopoly ever could be. In every way. <laughs> every way. Um, my wife loved it, and she's not a board game person at all. And it's, She's good at it, too. And she was good. Well, she, winning helps liking something. <laughs> it does, it does. It's like, she got, I mean, she picked up right away and did, did really well. It's... Don't bother with Monopoly. No, nobody should play Monopoly at all anymore. I just buy this. Yeah. Now, my number one <laughs> is Lords Vegas. And probably for totally different reasons. 
Well, I, I want to throw out a couple things that Martin mentioned before. Uh, one, the ability to trade and buy properties from each other, the ability to negotiate, the the, um, the all those things are things I loved in Monopoly. Mm -hmm. You owe someone money, you're like, oh, I'll give you this property instead of the money. You can do that in Lords of Vegas. It's it's totally a thing, and I love it. I love the mechanisms. I it's. Again, like we said before, everything great about Monopoly mm -hmm. without all the things that are bad about Monopoly. And I do want to just take a moment to note that this list has had multiple three-way crossovers for us. And the reason this is number one on the list is because Monopoly is one of the most widespread games that is played around. And this is such a perfect replacement for exactly. what is an utterly crappy game that should not be in print anymore. <laughs> but just because everybody knows it, they keep printing mm -hmm. it and keep selling it because people keep buying it. Yeah. Stop buying Monopoly. Buy Lords of Vegas. Yes. And I get no money from the company to say that. I'm just telling you, this is a better game. It's true. My number one has also already been mentioned. Twice. Mysterium replacing Clue. All, really know, all our number ones have already been talked about. I don't really know yeah. what else we could... Well, you know, one thing I have to say about this, uh, I, I, if you don't have anything else new to talk about, um, the the whole mystery, uh, the way of figuring out the different parts of the mystery is very similar to Clue, but the thing that's really different in Mysterium is the cooperative nature. And I think that that is what really makes this so much better, along with taking out silly things like the roll and move mechanic. Mm -hmm. That was in Clue. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, this is, uh, you're right. And well, it also has betting. You seem to like things where you bet. Well, the way, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the wagering mechanic is very fun. Yeah. And to get bonus points, like, oh, well, you know, I've already placed my guess. Now I'm going to bet on whether or not you're right. Yeah, that's, well, that's it, a great mechanic. It gets the other people involved who have already yeah. passed it, that point. It keeps everyone involved constantly. And, and that's what a, a, one thing that a good mm -hmm. game should do is keep everybody constantly involved in the game. Mm -hmm. So obviously, since it was already very high on my list, I'm not gonna, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna knock it. So there you have it. That's our top ten through one, top ten favorite games that replace classics. Now, what do you guys think? I want to hear from you. What do you think? Do you agree with our picks? Do you disagree with our picks? Or do you think we're crazy for including some of these games? <laughs> you now, do. all three of us included Lords of Vegas and Mysterium. Have you played Lords of Vegas and Mysterium? Do you think they are amazing replacements to Monopoly or, Myster or to Clue? Or do you disagree and think they're terrible replacements to Monopoly or Clue? Let us know in the comments down below. Tell us what are your favorite replacements to classic games. Put it in the comments down below. If you would like to comment, ask a question, or have any concern about this video, put it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see us do more countdowns like it, be sure to like this video, share this video, and please, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain, that is Captain spelt with a K, on YouTube. And until next time, game, game on. on.